Hello, my name is Christopher Duran, and I want to speak to you today about the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, the NSAIDs as we call them, and their safety. The non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, the NSAIDs, are very potent and very effective treatments for dog arthritis. Rimadyl and the other NSAIDs are effective and generally very safe, but they aren't harmless medications and have been known to have tragic side effects for a number of dogs. A small percentage of dogs, but certainly for those those owners and those dogs, a, a tragic outcome in some cases. So I want to give you a few rules that you can abide by to use these medications as safely as possible. And rule number one, decide if you need them. There's plenty of options for dog arthritis out there and these NSAIDs should not be your first choice. I would suggest softer medications, maybe Adequan or Cartrophin injections weekly for four to six weeks and maybe a joint strengthener such as Dasequin or Cosequin. You can also add high dose fish oils for the omega-3 anti-inflammatory effect. And if you need something on top of that and want to avoid the non-steroidal drugs, you can use tramadol while the other medications, the adequan and the dasequin, are taking effect. Rule number two is to make sure that no anti-inflammatories are given at the same time as one another. So the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs will interfere with similar medications such as aspirin and cortisone. Aspirin causes ulcers in the stomach, but as it's causing these ulcers, it also produces a protective substance to, to stop the ulcer from really taking effect. Unfortunately, the newer, more popular non-steroidal drugs will inhibit this protective compound, and this allows just a little ulcer that would have been there on the aspirin to turn into a pretty big ulcer, and dogs can perforate their stomachs due to these ulcers. And, and so if you've used aspirin within two weeks of being prescribed one of these more popular non-steroidals, you shouldn't use it. You should not use these new non-steroidals until two weeks has passed. Your vet can find something else for you in the meanwhile, that's fine, but don't use the non-steroidals anywhere near a dose of aspirin, even just one dose. Cortisone can have a similar double-up effect on the gastrointestinal side effects. So if you've used cortisone or your dog is on cortisone and your vet is prescribing an arthritis medication, you want to double-check that that is okay to use. In general, the washout period is shorter. Three to five days off cortisone is usually enough to stop any side effects. Third rule is to avoid human non-steroidals. Human NSAIDs, almost without exception, aren't good for use in dogs. I do have a, a blog post and a video on this subject, so you're very welcome to have a look at that. But if you're unsure, then better not to use them at all. Rule number four is to consider a blood test before and during treatment. Now, I won't say that every dog that I've ever put on non-steroidals has had a blood test. Most of them don't. But if your dog is old, if we're worried about existing kidney or liver disease, uh, then it is worth considering a blood test to make sure, firstly, that your dog is a good candidate for these drugs, because if your dog's got liver and kidney disease, it's probably not a good candidate. And also down the track, maybe two weeks down the track, to make sure that things are going okay. Some people even do that these tests every three to six months as an ongoing thing if they're concerned. Rimadyl has received a lot of bad press because of catastrophic episodes of liver failure. Most of these episodes, these tragic episodes, have been in dogs with pre-existing liver disease. So this is where these tests can come in handy to, to just pick up these these problems before we start these medications. There are still a small, a very small number of what we would call idiosyncratic reactions to Rimadyl, which is where you've got a, a normal dog with no problems on blood tests that still 
has a catastrophic liver episode. And if this worries you, then find a different drug. Rimadyl is a good drug, but there are other good drugs out there as well. And you're very welcome to ask your vet to change onto something that you feel more comfortable with. I use Rimadyl a lot, and I don't see any problems with it, but I know these problems do occur. Statistically speaking, the human non-steroidals kill about 16,000 people a year. And in dogs, I think that number is relatively much lower, but these drugs are potent and they can cause harm. Rule number five is to watch your dog closely on these treatments. Despite all the precautions in the world, some dogs will have side effects to the non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. Now, statistically, these aren't very likely, but if they are going to happen, it is most likely to happen within the first month. So watch your dog closely for any signs of ill health, vomiting, diarrhea, not eating, not drinking, a yellowing of the eyes and gums. Those are all signs that you want to move on very fast, and at the very least you want to discontinue the drug, and if these signs are, are severe, you obviously want to see your vet. So the take-home message is that the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are generally safe and they are one of the most potent weapons that we have against dog arthritis. They can make a big difference for your dog's mobility, for your dog's quality of life. So I would use them if your dog needs them, but just be careful, try some other things first and don't overdo it. Thank you, my name is Christopher Duran. You can find out more information on my blog and you can download my free ebook called The Dog Arthritis Survival Guide. Thank you. <laughs>